reads, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So he really, he had me looking up life. What does life mean? And it is the Greek, and I don't have my notebook with me of what the word was, but it's a Greek word of life. And life, the word life there means a testimony. And I'm like, okay, what? Like, I know what a testimony is, and we know people who give testimony in court, but what is the legal definition or the actual definition of testimony? So in him, so when we're in Jesus, and even in him before the foundations of the world was life, and that life is a testimony. So testimony is a, it's primarily used in court, right? But it is a verbal or a written declaration or statement, but mostly in legal cases. And we know from reading the word God that he is our attorney, right? He is sitting at the right hand of the father interceding for us as almost like a legal counsel. And everything that we see here on earth is a representation of what is in heaven and in the spirit realm, right? Like everything that God created, he created in reflection to what's already or already was in the spirit realm. So like even our court systems and our legal systems and stuff like that, it is a reflection of God's kingdom and the order and that legality in God's kingdom. So what I didn't know for so long when I was struggling with all of these things was that the enemy had a legal right to me. He had a legal right to me through generational things that had been passed down through the generation line. That that legal right was never revoked. It was never repented for and it was never done away with. But I am that bloodline breaker in my family. I say no more. I say it stops now. It stops with me in the name of Jesus. So once God showed me those things, because I struggled for so long, and even when I came to the Lord, I was not fully set free from all of these things. And I struggled, y'all. I struggled, and I struggled. I wanted to fully surrender to Christ. I wanted what I saw that other people seemed to have in him, but I didn't know how to obtain it. But the Lord knew my heart, and I remember one night laying in bed after, I don't remember, I had watched or heard something, and it was, you know, about all the things that we were going to stand in judgment for, for the Lord. And I remember my heart's cry that night was, surely, Lord, are you going to hold me accountable for things I don't even know? I have no idea. Like, I was ignorant to the things of the Lord. And God brought a way to give me knowledge. And it was only through Him. Like, so many times I have learned. I have learned the Word of God. I have learned um, revelation through the Word of God. And visions and dreams. But through all of those, all of that knowledge came from Him. life. So in him was a testimony and the life and that testimony was the light of men. So that actually means a source of illumination and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So, so many times the light shines in the darkness through Jesus, through speak the word and we preach the word but there's some people who we just we, it seems like you just can't get to them they don't want to see they don't want to understand they are perfectly happy with the darkness that they're living in and that darkness there actually means a lack of light no matter I don't I don't know you know sometimes people are I don't want to say that 
that were too far gone because people saw me and the patterns I fell in my whole entire adult life and over and over and over and I had word curses spoken over me that I would never be any different, that I was too far gone, that I would never do any better, that I was always going to be that way and that was a lie from the pit of hell that the enemy gladly wanted to speak over me. The enemy gladly, the enemy knew who I was. So many times the enemy knows who you are. He doesn't want you to know who you are. So he'll put these thoughts and these ideas into your mind to keep you in this limited way of thinking. He always told me I was so weak. I would see other people persevering and pressing through for physical activities or just consistency in their life. And I'm like, I can never do that. I'm not like them. I'm not strong enough. I, I had that weak, those those weak mind set, and it was spoken over me. It was spoken over me, and I began to believe it, and I began to speak it over myself. But until I read the Word of God, and then I understood the power of life and death is in your tongue, and then... I've noticed over the last couple of days that I have been having to do some crazy mental aerobics to take every thought captive to the obedience of the Word of God. What does the Word of God say over how I'm thinking, over the things that I'm feeling, and then starting to speak those things in my mind over my situation. And, you know, there's a lot of New Age practices, you know, um speak it until it manifests and all that's a crock it is the word of god speak the word of god over your mind speak the word of god and all the promises of god will come into fulfillment